I want to talk about the adaptations kind of in a collective sense. We set out initially to build a broad general inclusive fitness. Well, what would that look like? How would we know if we were getting it done, if that's indeed what had happened? What would that, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. You could say, well, better Fran, Helen, et cetera, times than others. You could talk about spinning the hopper, and I, when we play that game, I do better than anyone else. Um, there'd be a lot of different ways to describe it. But we've had an interesting experiment, experience, experiment, and I talk at times have made big point of this black box model where we got inputs and outputs and not always a real deeper abiding concern with what the causal mechanism is that gets me from input to output. Let me give you a clear example of this. I mentioned at lunch to someone that we were talking to about uh, you introduce uh, the deadlift to cyclists where they haven't deadlifted before, bicyclists. And uh, what you'll get in short order is them coming back reporting that on my favorite hill I used to downshift and stand now I'm up shifting, grabbing a higher gear, remaining seated, and spinning it out. And for anyone that rides a bike, that's a profound difference. You're a better cyclist if you're rather than grabbing a lower gear and standing up and, and spinning it out and getting that stretch, if you can sit, grab a higher gear, and spin. That's an improvement for sure. That always happens with cyclists, always. Now why? Well, is it the neuroendocrine response? Is it neurosynaptic facilitation? Is, this, uh, is it increased core strength? And by the way, we'll, I believe, address tomorrow that for us, um, core strength, another one of these buzzwords that's been misappropriated. It has to do with midline stabilization, integration of pelvis and spine into a single functional unit. Um, what is it? We could postulate all day long as to what the difference is. It may be all of them, maybe none of them, maybe we miss the mechanism altogether. But the important thing is that when you introduce deadlifts where you have them before, you get an improved hill climber on a bike. And we got thousands of these things. And the part that's measurable, observable, repeatable, the part that was a data point, is, is, the, is the output. Now, is there advantage to knowing what goes on in the box? Sure, it enhances understanding, blah, blah, blah. And God, you know I'm all about understanding, right? I mean, that's important to me. Not really. Um, I'm a fitness whore, I just want results. But one of, the, one of the things that is very important about getting some understanding about what happens in the box is that eventually you will find a pattern, a mechanism that gets me from input to outputs and in the best of all possible worlds, it will suggest to us what further modifications to make to our approach, that is what about the outputs could guide the inputs to get better outputs. And if indeed I know it's about midline stabilization, we may explore that f further if we had that clear understanding. If we thought it was neuroendocrine response, we may look to what it is that we know alters hormonal and neurological we may lose to give favorable adaptation, you know, et cetera. Are you with me? If I know what's making the difference, it may give some very powerful hints as to how to modify the stimulus or the, or the subsequent inputs. That's how we're going to grow the program. That is exactly the process by which we've gotten where we're at today. Well, we've been doing this long enough now. We've got the largest N involved number of participants involved in high intensity exercise the world's ever seen before on a single uh, protocol. We've got lots of data, lots of willing participants, lots of interest. And over time, a pattern has emerged to the outputs that allows me to restate the aims. But I want you to know that what I'm about to share with you is kind of, again, an empirical observation. It's something that we've noticed occurring, it's something that we can measure, observe, repeatably measure and observe. It's a data point in and of itself that has given us some strong suggestions, a keener understanding of what it is that we are doing and assess that in terms of the aims of a broad general inclusive fitness. And here it is. It's worth writing down. This is kind of the punchline to the day, and that is increased work capacity across broad time and modal domains. It is our current contention that this is what is happening with CrossFitters.